without a doubt, phone flipping in 2019 is changing greatly uh, for being in this industry for a little over a year and a half now. I've noticed a big kind of shift within the market, and not necessarily just when I'm filming this video, but over the past couple months, obviously, it takes time to recognize when things are changing. So with that said, today I'm gonna to be kind of walking you guys through uh, how the market is changing in 2019. Obviously there's more competition. With more competition means uh, more money is going to other people. So with that said, you have to kind of figure out strategies to be able to differentiate yourself uh, and really be able to kill it in uh, today's market. So, but before we get into my computer, I'm gonna do a little bit more of a presentation style. I think you guys really like these type of videos. Definitely give it a thumbs up if you guys do enjoy. And if you're not part of the family yet, hit that subscription button down below. I'd appreciate the support so much. But with that said, let's get right into it. So again today, I'm gonna to be walking you guys through how to become a, basically a one percenter in foam flipping. So basically all that means is how, do you, how are you gonna be the top percentage of people that are taking most of the money? Cause I'd say probably the top five to 10% of people within the foam flipping industry are the ones making the serious kind of money. So if you wanna to get to that point, uh, you need to be in that top percentage of people. Um, not to say like there isn't a lot of money to be made out there. There's a couple hundred dollars everybody can make, even a couple thousand dollars everybody can make a single month uh, just doing like basically buying from home and selling. But if you wanna take it to that next level, check out these couple tips I'm gonna be walking you guys through. So 2018 phone flipping strategy is not going to fly. So basically all that means is what you were used to doing in 2018 or if you're just getting in the market now and you've maybe watched a couple of my videos or other people's videos most of them were all recorded in 2019 maybe except for like three four or five of them so the strategies that i talk about a lot of people still comment on my videos in the past that's great a lot of that knowledge still applies but it's not too applicable in the sense of you need to tweak the strategy so a couple of the points i'm going to be walking you guys through is the market is getting more saturated and the traditional approach isn't going to work. Obviously with more and more people talking about phone flipping, especially myself growing my audience, that's it's basically what I promote is like my main thing, right? I'm here talking to you, probably about 95% of my videos are about phone flipping. So obviously that means more people are gonna test it out. Obviously, to be honest, probably the, the average consumer will last maybe a, a month or two in the industry, but that could take a lot of our profit share out. Um, and it gets kind of annoying. I mean, for me in Phoenix, Arizona, I've recognized a lot of people have started to saturate the market. So that's why I've come up with things like phone, um, with Facebook ads, like literally things that I teach you guys. That's a lot of the new things that I brought into the game to be able to separate myself. And a lot of things I talk about will help you guys separate your business model from the other. Cause that small tweak here and there, that little golden nugget, will change your business. What I've recognized in any business model, it's always the, the one guy that has that weird or odd strategy that always makes a ton of money doing it. So as long as you can own it and do really well at it, you're gonna make a lot of money. So that traditional approach won't really work anymore. That 2017, 2018 approach, some of it's gonna fly, but 95% of it's not gonna fly in, in terms of a couple different things. So like free ads still can work, but paid will bring real results. So free ads, I got, this is a topic I talked about a little while ago, beginning of the video. A lot of people still comment on my videos in the past, like, oh, I tried this Craigslist strategy, I tried this offer up ads, uh, they're all getting taken down. Well, I, it's part, that's what, exactly what I'm talking about. It, there's a shift where now there's a lot more saturation in the market, more people are flagging ads, more people play that kind of game where they don't want you to um, have any sort of market space in the ad kind of space within these platforms, whatever platform that might be. Like you, it's almost impossible now to put ads on Facebook Marketplace. There's gonna, if you want to, it's gonna be really kind of weird. You're gonna make it look like you're selling a phone, but people don't really vibe with that to be honest. Um, so like if it brings you results, great, but I can probably already predict like it, it's not your probably main way of making money. Offer up, yeah, you're gonna make, you can make ton of money on there. For me, the strategy in 2019 is I just bid on a lot of phones right now. That's probably not gonna fly in two, three months, but for me, 
bidding on OfferUp consistently and just bidding on these phones and not putting out ads on OfferUp is getting me a lot more uh, money in the sense of like my time is better well spent doing that than trying to figure out ways to put up ads on those platforms uh, specifically like offer up but on the third point that I have for you guys selling on one platform will create inconsistency in your day-to-day -day profits if you're only we were before we were talking about buying now on the selling side of things if you're only selling locally if you're only selling to private buyers if you're only selling on Mercari you're only selling on eBay you're probably not hitting as much money as you could potentially be making because I use those all those different platforms except eBay to be able to find the highest price because in our our goal is to be able to make the highest profit on the phone so um, some places maybe I might be able to get a higher price off Mercari than I would my private buyer because that's somebody that's more um, realistic to be using that phone every day to day basis but if somebody like my private buyer he's buying at bad prices because he still needs to make margin as well which I'm totally fine with it's we're just the middle ground people trying to make money and help those guys make money so having multiple platforms on the selling side of things if you don't you're probably seeing a big inconsistency I I've seen a lot of posts on that in the Facebook group as well why like all these people are saying I, I do $500 I do $20 I do $600 I do $30 like you, there's the inconsistency there right so if you start tapping into those multiple platforms I can almost guarantee on the selling side of things, you're going to start to see a lot more cash flow come into your bank account and to see a lot more consistency on that aspect. So the last one is everyday sellers, in a sense, I'm just talking about the local people out there that are selling their phones, are getting smarter and more scammy. So in 2019, people know what insurance claims are. People know uh, that their phones are going to are financed. People know what they're doing. Generally, I'd say 98% of the time, people know what they're selling you. So in a sense, a, a lot of the times, I see a lot of other YouTubers say never trust anyone. Well, yeah, in a sense, but just don't, I want to think like that. You need to just adapt your business model to the fact that most people aren't going to be trustworthy. So don't be a, like a, a total douchebag about it. Like respect people. Some people generally are just trying to sell their old phones and I'll talk to you guys about which ones I generally will trust in terms of certain types of people. Uh, but more people are becoming familiar with those scams. They'll sell you them, report them lost. They'll sell you finance phones. They'll tell you it's this carrier, it's not that carrier. So just be wary. 2019 is a, it's gonna be a big kind of shift for that. More people are gonna get smarter in the local market. So now platforms that don't work. So I talked about this earlier, but Facebook Marketplace. This is an exact ad. This is an ad example that I put in a YouTube video a couple months ago um, that worked really well for me. I buy smartphones. You guys saw it as 971 views in the past when I was like in college, just about a year and a half ago. I was getting like three, four, five thousand dollars, four, five thousand views on a single post within Facebook Marketplace. One because I was one of the only persons in my small town, and two. It's just a very populated platform um, for my city. Just a lot of people use it. So instead of doing doing ads like this, I buy smartphones. This is 100% would get taken down in five seconds. Like in now today's day and age, that would not fly. Facebook algorithm has figured that out. They don't want ads like that. It's kind of annoying. We're just trying to make money. It's not. We're not scamming people, but they just don't allow it. So an alternative. What would be a good alternative for that? Use local Facebook groups. A lot of people in mine and other like big Facebook groups, I'm just talking about like the local information groups, not like these buy sell groups I'm talking about in terms of using local Facebook groups are talking so much about how well they do in just posting 30, 40, 50 ads maybe once a week within a couple different Facebook groups and you can probably join there's probably over two, three hundred local groups that are, in a sense, just a buy-sell kind of vibe within your area. Obviously, some smaller towns would have less of those groups. Bigger towns like Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, my town, would probably have like 500 of those buy-sell groups. So for me, I don't use this strategy, but it doesn't mean it doesn't work. Uh, I just put all my marbles in, in a couple different things that I'll talk about. But a lot of people use Facebook groups. Go join those local buy sell. Some owners, I'd recommend you ask the admins if you can post ads um, or how many you can post in a week or a day and then just kind of work with them because you don't want to get kicked out. That's obviously bad, but it's the more you join, the bigger network you have and the more people you'll potentially find. So don't use Facebook Marketplace in my opinion. Just use the local Facebook groups. The platforms that don't work, offer up this is one. Again, I'll, I'll talk about the alternative of this, but offer up. For some of you, it still will work. I will see some random ads within scrolling through offer up that just stick there. I don't know why nobody's flagged them, but they just got the luck of the draw. And even offer up hasn't taken it down. And these are flat out. I'll buy your phones. 
black blacklisted iCloud on like well they're they're like they're like full <laughs> like full going for it kind of ads and they'll be on there so mo some of you it'll work some of you it won't work but for, for most of you, it's just not gonna be one of those platforms that you can just post ads on a lot. So most of the time they get taken down anymore, but you could definitely be beneficial for small town folks. That's what I was talking about for the, some of you that it might work. It would probably be working for those that are in those small towns, like not really any big uh, like city area wide kind of things. Like you're in like outskirts towns, very rural. I think that's the word for it or yeah, it's not urban, rural kind of areas. Um, so I definitely recommend you try it out if you haven't for posting ads on OfferUp, but if you post too many, you run the, you run the risk of it getting taken, your whole account getting banned. I've seen it time and time again. I probably get one or two people in my group every single day they get banned on OfferUp because they're posting too many ads and you just don't want to be that person because it could be a very powerful tool. If I lost OfferUp, I'd be losing a couple thousand dollars a month right now. So I try my best power to just use OfferUp to my best advantage. Um, and use it the right way. So if anything, try using the paid route on OfferUp. I'd recommend you kind of uh, test it out. I heard paid advertising on OfferUp is great. Uh, you, nobody can really flag the ad and OfferUp loves if you give them money, right? So on the other hand, OfferUp is excellent for selling. So for me, if I for the few phones that I do sell locally, OfferUp in Phoenix, Arizona, my town, works tremendously well. So if you guys might not be using OfferUp to buy so much, which I, I still do, so if you guys would wanna try it out, just start bidding on a bunch of phones. But for me, like when I was in Tucson, Arizona, there wasn't much traction on the platform, so you have to figure out wh where most people are in your town that are selling these phones, like which platform they're on. So I would recommend trying OfferUp on the selling side of things. It, for me, they fly like hotcakes. There's a ton of ads on there, but I know how to market them really well, make the ads stand out, and it's just all about having that first picture that when you scroll through, that's, you just gotta have to make it stand out. You could do some crazy things with it, but it really does work. So, platforms that do work. So, my opinion, I've always talked about this, but Facebook ads, not the marketplace, but paid Facebook advertising. So, when you're in your, uh, like going to the full ads manager side of Facebook things, it can get a little bit complicated, uh, but a ton of free info in the Facebook group um, that'll give you little golden nuggets here and there. It's not so much to kind of start off Facebook ads, so if you guys have no idea, I do have a small course on it. It used to be a lot more expensive, but now it's only $47. It's basically just the basics on setting up and basically running your first ad. I give you the exact blueprint for the one that I use and have been using for a long time now. And I'll put a link down below, It'll probably be one of the first couple links you guys can check it out, but it's only $47. I literally had a guy, MMJ93, he's been around on the YouTube channel for a while. Saw a comment from him the other day. He said, Kish, your Facebook ads course helped me buy a BMW 530i. Thank you, bro. So, MMJ93, if you're watching this, you're killing it, bro. Keep it up. Um, I would love to maybe have you on the YouTube channel, maybe get you on an interview or something, see how that actually worked out. But literally on a little $47 course, um, he was able to generate enough Facebook ads to the point where he was buying enough phones to buy himself a BMW 530i. And so, I mean, that's great. That's that's incredible, man. So like those results probably aren't the most typical thing, but I mean, Facebook ads, they don't really get taken down. They don't get taken all down at all. There's just a couple of ways you can get around to be able to actually get them up. Um, so I talk about that in the course and just having them run consistently. Once you have one up, it'll just make you a ton of money from here on once you find that winning ad creative. So that's a big platform I, I recommend, Facebook ads. There's a bunch of free information on there out there as well. So if you guys wanna just like do uh, maybe a couple days of research, you'll probably figure it out on yourself, uh, on your own. But um, I really just talk about in my small course just how to like do it specifically for Facebook ads in terms of phone flipping ads. Um, so I think that would benefit you guys, but Facebook ads is probably just, it's just one of the better ones in my opinion. Um, and then enough buying, where do I sell? So most of this time I've been talking all about where do you buying phones, like well, how does the market change in 2019 for that? Well, looking at the 2019 kind of selling aspect of the thing, of aspect of phone flipping, diversify your profile. So top, my top suggestions would be to sell locally, sell in Mercari, or sell uh, to private buyers. And so I know a lot, I'll get this question a lot, where do I sell the most? Well, 95, 90% uh, probably of my phones go to about private go to these different private buyers uh, for me it really changed my business it really accelerated it to that next level it's not required at all but I know the prices I'm going into every single phone meetup for like I, I basically just go off their price sheets and everything it works really well I've worked with one or two guys that are literally changed my business just because one they pay really good prices and two 
Um, I've just worked with them and had great business with them. So there's a lot of good aspects of it. I could probably sit here for an hour and tell you everything great about having a private buyer. But don't worry, like if you don't have one, don't like you don't you don't need one. But I'd recommend go checking out, putting like just trying to find a private buyer. Um, if you guys haven't don't know how to find one, I'd recommend you watch a couple videos on my channel. I don't remember which one, but I probably have something talking about. Uh, where to find private buyers. I'm not gonna, don't ask it in the comment section because I probably won't answer it. It gets kind of annoying. But what do I look for when trying to find a private buyer? Well, I, one, I look for industry credibility. So who, what kind of people are working with them? Do they have good reviews of them? Like I'll go in ahead and ask people beforehand. You still have a lot of phones to them. Has everything been smooth? How's the returns and everything like that? And then once those kind of add up, figure out the industry credibility, that's a big check mark for me. Top prices, obviously, as somebody that does this to make money, we're all on the profit margin side of things. We need to make money, so we wanna look for somebody that pays good prices. Um, and so the people that pay pretty high, a lot of you, <laughs> probably some of the people that are private buyers always wonder how they do it. Well, they're probably just taking less margins, but they'll do more volume, so they'll probably make a, a lot of money that way, but it, which I think is really smart to, in, in a sense, just to market to people like me on the, on the lower end side of things where we're the person that they sell, uh, that they buy from. You look for things like top prices. So another one would be an aesthetic price document. That's just like your Google Sheets. Never trust anybody that's a private buyer that either says I will just tell you, just shoot me the what the phone specs are and I'll tell you a price. Uh, usually I've heard bad reviews from them and they're just not credi credible in any sense. Doesn't mean they're bad, they just I just haven't heard good things from them. Haven't really worked with anybody like that from me for that reason, uh, for my business for that reason. Uh, but just make sure it looks good, make sure it has multiple tabs, they buy all sorts of things, whether it's computers, uh, Samsungs, iPhones, accessories, it could be literally AirPods, it could be anything. That how, That's how you know they're doing a really good business model and there's somebody you can trust. And last one, some a lot of people don't talk about is, and I haven't talked about, is applicable fees. Some people will charge PayPal fees and stuff like that. Some people you have to send in first and then they pay you and then they still might take a fee out of it. Kind of look around. I'd recommend looking at probably three, four, five private buyers to really figure out which is one that makes the most sense for you. Um, and that's kind of something I just learned over time for figuring out which is the best private buyer. So again, diversify your profile, either locally Mercari private buyers. And I did mention eBay on there because I absolutely hate it. The platform sucks. If you are selling on it, good for you, but I can, you're probably gonna get a scam probably here soon. So um, expect the, so the last kind of slide I have is expect the worst. So this is probably the biggest slide I have for why the market is changing in 2019. Expect the worst, AKA appraise the worst. So what do I mean? Don't trust anyone in the local market. I talked about this a little, this kind of contra contradicts the point a little bit that I mentioned earlier, but no, don't necessarily not trust anybody, but just adapt that in your business model. So the one thing that most people are usually right about is the original car carrier, but you can still verify that either you through using SickW or putting in SIM cards or meeting at carrier store, they'll always be able to tell you what the original carrier is. My preference is using SickW, um, but pretty much a lot of, to be honest, a lot of people will lie about if the phone is truly unlocked, they'll lie about if it has insurance on the phone. Most of the phones in the newer side of things, like I say anything from X's or newer will if they're like brand new in box, they're finance one, 100% or two, they're just gonna get reported and then you have a blacklisted phone. So for me, how do I adapt that into my business model? I've talked about that a little bit in this video. What do I mean? So I appraise about 98% of the phones I buy is bad ESN and pretty much any, any top dog, not saying that I'm a top dog even close to it, but a lot of people you'll see and whoever makes videos about this on YouTube, I've heard seen a lot of people talk about it. They always buy phones at a bad ESN price and so because that's where our buyers buy it at, right? So that's kind of what you're asking, why? Well, that's where our buyers, because I sell 90 to 95% of my phones to private buyers. So if they're buying a bad ESM price, but still paying pretty high, I need to be buying at a bad ESM price. If I was buying at a regular price, I'd sell to them and I'd probably just make my money back or I'd be losing money so that I need to make money on my own side of things. Uh, so I need to praise this bad ESM and once you praise this bad ESM, you don't really care about the IMEI, you don't care what happens to it. Um, yeah, people get away with it on your side of things, but you're both making money, uh, so it's a win-win for everybody. So which ones do I not appraise as bad ESN? I know I'm gonna get that question as well. Pretty much the older generation phone. So an example would be like an iPhone 6 Plus, 16 gigabyte AT&T. Nobody's had that phone on insurance for two and a half, 
three years. Like, there's no reason for that phone to ever get blacklisted. There might be a 0.1% chance somebody reports it or something like that. But those phones will always just resell locally. A lot of the, like the six pluses, I could probably buy for one to 150 and sell them for two to 250 right now. So there's an easy 50 to 100 dollar profit right there. Maybe even like the seven pluses, I'd go up to. Um, where there really isn't a chance of appraising as bad as said more anymore. Those phones are getting into the really older generation phones. So for me right now, when I film this video, that'd be an example of what I would not buy as bad as um, And those are the kind of phones that I resell locally. Obviously, that's not a big percentage of what I do, but the few odd ones, like money is money, right? You should be making money on anything that comes to you, um, whether it's an iPhone or an Android or laptop. You should try to make money off of it, right? So. I, and the last thing, I know a lot of you are probably gonna ask, how do I justify the price to a seller? I've seen this before, and I think it would be valuable if you guys would kind of figure it out uh, as well, or if I just told you guys about it. Well, you don't, so I don't really justify the price to the seller of the phone, even though they're just some innocent person trying to sell that phone. Most people know what they're selling you and know exactly what they're gonna do with the phone, whether they're gonna report it, or like file the whole insurance claim thing, or if it's finance and they're, it's not, and they're saying it's not finance, they know it's not finance. So um, if you're able to check the IMEI, show them it's not doing that, they're gonna probably just sell you the phone, to be honest. If you're a nice enough person, most people invest the time once they're there meeting with you. For me, I've recognized a lot of people won't walk away just because they want the cash. Um, and so they know if you're just a reseller and you make it, you don't really make it known. That's why I love acting pretty ambiguous on the side of things when I buy phones. Once I get to that transaction, they will generally know I know what I'm doing. They know, like, uh, I, it's pretty obvious when I'm checking a phone, I know what I'm doing. So for me, I think the reason that they can sell it to us for that price and not walk away is because they're gonna make money, um, especially if they're doing like insurance fraud or whatever like that, or some bad end side of things that we don't want to necessarily deal with, or they're selling you a finance phone, whatever it is, we're both gonna make money, so I think that's a great benefit to this part of the industry. Those people might be scheming, but that's not what we're doing. We're just buying these phones for the parts and selling them as um, for the parts as well. So everybody's making money, so it's a win-win for all of us. And so last thing I have, final thought, every business has to adapt to its surrounding markets. So the ones that stay ahead of it will always beat the competition. So that's pretty much the justification for this video. Uh, it's pretty much what I, I wanted to portray to you guys. Like this is just another business model that can be adapted in these kind of specific ways I talked about. So a little bit, probably one of my longer videos on the channel, but I hope you guys sticked around for it. If you guys did like it, I'd appreciate you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment section, uh, comment in the comment section down below. And if you aren't a part of the family yet, hit that subscription button down below as well. I know that's what I'm asking you a lot, but I appreciate it so much. As I said, I'll catch you guys in the next video.